This is a Lenovo ThinkCenter M58 that I just got a few days ago. It's not bad, but I did have buyer's remorse after purchasing it since I saw a beautiful Idea Center K series after I bought the Sync Center, and both are LGA775 or Socket T systems, which I can't blame that too much since LGA775 was Intel's main socket for seven years. So, delving into the history of the system, it gets its total roots in the original IBM PC. But I'm not going to go too much into the predecessors of the Think Center brand, but I am going to go a tab it into the NetVista, which was uh, introduced in May of 2000, at least as a computer, since IBM has been using the name since 1996 with some computer programs. But in uh, 2003, IBM introduced a new line of business class desktops to replace the NetVista, known as the Think Center, which was a take on IBM's uh, branding from the time with their Think marketing campaign. The first models IBM introduced were the S50, M50, and A50P, featuring the then new Intel 865 chipset, according to CNET. They also also mentioned that the M50 was also available with desktop version of Linux, such as Red Hat or SUS. Fast forward to 2005, and IBM sold its PC division to a Chinese computer company known as Lenovo, which according to PC Mag had an early issue where the federal government wasn't very fond of this sale, but they uh, approved uh, the sale and integration of IBM's PC division into Lenovo. Fast forward again to October of 2008, and Lenovo introduced the Lenovo Think Center M58 and a more eco-friendly M58P, the latter of which got a training video on Lenovo's YouTube channel, and Lenovo oftentimes would post videos of new models on their YouTube channel. I know they did that for the Lenovo C205 because I had one of those back in the day and I remember that being a screensaver on there. Anyway, moving on, I want to talk more about the Think Center M58 now and my model that I got. First things first, I want to bring some attention to this residue that was probably left over from sticker since I'm not sure where the system originally came from. I'd assume maybe from like a school or a business. I don't know. Anyway, we have a misconfigured diff drive this isn't supposed to be this far in there, and I tried to do something to line it better. We also have this drive bay for another optical drive or something. And then we also have a 3.5-inch bay. On the lower half of the system, we have the power button, a USB port, audio jacks, another USB port, and the stickers. On the rear, on the other hand, we have the power supply, PS2, VGA, serial, a display port, more USB ports, Ethernet, and audio jacks. Anyway, I want to get inside this system next, so I can potentially also readjust the disc drive. Getting inside this thing seems like a hard task, but turns out that I wasn't doing this correctly, and that there's a button on the side panel that I can use to basically remove the uh, side panel entirely. Before I go further, I'm going to apply an anti-static wristband because of the fact that I don't want to cause harm to myself or the system. I also will mention that there is a debate on whether you should and shouldn't use the anti-static wristband or a similar thing. I'll leave that up to your decision if you want to use one or not. I choose to do so because, well, me. Inside of the computer, we have the uh, heatsink and CPU underneath that, which is an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500. We have the disk drive, which is a not original one, especially given the fact that a HP LightScribe DVD drive, which I'm not sure if Lenovo ever used, but this is not original because how else would it be so stuck in there? We also have the, the um, memory and power supply. Anyway, I want to go try to get this uh, disk drive in adjusted a tad bit so it's a little bit easier to access. I can't do too much for this, and I'm going to have to eventually tear this down and just put the disk drive forward and, you know, but I'm at least going to try to make a dent and make it a tad bit easier to access. I fiddled around with it, but couldn't get entirely closer to the bezel, but it's a start. Anyway, I think I've fiddled around enough in this thing, and I think we should put the side panel back on and go put it over by the desk and try it out and see if it works. Anyway, I think it's time that we check out what this thing can actually do. Well, how about we load a build of Nanami OS, specifically build 26C, onto this? And while you wait for me to uh, get the disk for that, how about you uh, check out how many times this uh, PC is trying to boot off of the network? Alright, I got it now, so, well, let's try it out. And turns out that I put build 16 in here. Well, it works and the keyboard works. Anyway, let's check out the BIOS now, shall we? Looking there, we have main, which has system summary and data in time, as well as devices, which contains the hard drive's configuration, which has a setting that's totally not going to give us uh, problems later. Then we also have advanced power security startup and exit. Anyways, let's actually go start the build of the Namios that I actually wanted to cover, that being build 26C. Anyway, this build did not work properly, likely due to it being rather finicky with PS2 keyboards, which I can't blame too much. I did find that USB keyboards work, on the other hand. Anyway, that was where I was going to leave this video, however, 
I then ended up getting a hard drive, so I might as well install that in this system. And let me tell you this, installing a hard drive in a bay that is pretty much standard on all these M58s is a bit tedious. At least I found it kind of hard. I had to look in the manual, which I have a copy of. Anyway, now that I've got the drive installing here, I might as well see if an installer will detect it. I wanted to go with them what was already on this USB flash drive, and turns out that that was a beta build of Windows Vista. It then hung up on me before I could even get to the install now screen. So then I tried Windows 2000. It also hung up at around a similar point, this time hanging up when it said setup is starting Windows 2000. Okay, that's weird. So now I am going to try the Windows XP installer. And then I got this screen. Now, this may be something fascinating for the younger generations, uh, because, wow, it's a blue screen, and it's so interesting and stuff, but trust me, this is one that you don't want to end up on your own system, because this means that Windows cannot find the boot device, or the hard drive, or something. For frame of mind, this was so bad that when I tried Arc Linux, because I know how to do it in some live environment, when I tried booting into Arc Linux from a flash drive, it was giving me I.O. errors. Well, turn Turns out that after a bit more stuff and with 30 minutes of one of my colleagues in my room, uh, turns out that the uh, AHCI mode option in the BIOS, it was causing a few problems. So I ended up getting Windows XP installed on here, but it took a bit of uh, work and now everything's all fine. But if I want to do any recovery media video, which was my original intention to run recovery media on the system, I'm going to have to change that mode back to what it was previously set at. Anyway, I think the moral of this story is that, well, I don't really know if there's a moral to this story, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week, bye!